scumbag. In fact, the level of attack and abuse that I suffered from these so-called conservatives was the same level of attack I suffered um, when I called out Fauci. My intention in calling these people out, be it Elon Musk or Fucker Carlson or uh, Booby Kennedy or uh, all these um, opportunists, or including Donald Trump, is because I care for people. And Elon Musk is an absolute scumbag, which I've been saying since December, because he has no intention, had no intention, of removing the government, the government's backdoor censorship portal into Twitter, which I was the first one to discover during my lawsuit in 2020, in October of 2020. And that lawsuit wasn't supported by any of these grifters. None of them covered it. I didn't see any of these grifters helping us. I didn't see Elon Musk there, but it was my lawsuit, my hard work, which exposed that the government of the United States and the governments of the world had created backdoor portals into Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc. And we exposed that in October of 2020. And I've been vindicated today because, as I predicted, Elon Musk went and brought in a woman who is part, you know, not only part, but at the executive chair level of the World Economic Forum and uh, is for pro-vaccine mandates and was for pro-masks. And if you look at her history, she's embedded into the Hollywood and global entertainment elites. She's also the group chair of YMU, and you can look it up. Be it in calling out Fauci, be it in calling out Trump, be it in calling out Elon Musk, be it in calling out the pandemic, when it mattered, not when it was fashionable to do. But one of the important things that I uncovered about our lawsuit, and starting in October of 2020, was the entire censorship infrastructure that was put together out of CISA. And I put together all the people, all the organizations. All of this was plagiarized by Matt Taibbi, The Intercept, and the Twitter Files guys. They never gave me credit for my hard work. I put this together. It was part of my lawsuit. We exposed the entire government big tech censorship infrastructure. What you will find here is that CISA there was created by Trump. Yes, Trump. That's a cybersecurity infrastructure security agency, infrastructure security agency. That should not be confused with the Cybersecurity Information Security Act that was put in place by Obama. CISA was the organization put in place by Trump. And all of those people there were involved in deplatforming me when I exposed this infrastructure. It involves government people, non-government people, but on the far left side, you'll see Lakeland Murdoch, you'll see the Zuckerbergs, you'll see Pierre Omidyar, who funded all of the infrastructure so government up on top could launder censorship to companies like Twitter. It's very detailed, it's a PhD project. All of this was done in October, of, starting in October of 2020. That lawsuit was a lawsuit that I had to file by myself and I took on seven lawyers. It was Ayodhuri versus Twitter. I took on the lawyers at Twitter. I took on the lawyers in the government of Massachusetts. Without any help, one guy who has no legal experience took on seven many Harvard trained lawyers and we won and we exposed that government has a backdoor portal into Twitter. Where was fucker Carlson? Where was Elon Musk? This is in 2020. And none of these people exposed any of this. In fact, they concealed our lawsuit for, ex for exposing that infrastructure. I was deplatformed fully on February 1st of 2021. And I was running for U.S. Senate at the time. So think about this, a United States Senate candidate for exposing the government censorship infrastructure, which I should probably be given the Nobel Prize or many awards, was thrown off. My work was intentionally concealed by the mainstream media. However, as we're gonna share with you, we got this work out to many, many people. My question when Elon Musk took over Twitter was, will he do anything to dismantle the government and big tech censorship infrastructure that we discovered? So again, this is that infrastructure that we discovered, unequivocally showing that government has a backdoor portal into Twitter. Long before the bullshit Twitter files, which plagiarized my work and never bothered sharing this. Now, on October 30th, some of you may know, on October 28th, right there, stop right there, Elon Musk announced that he was buying Twitter. Now, I was still deplatformed. On October 30th, I alerted Elon Musk to the existence of the government and big tech censorship infrastructure, what was called the Twitter Partner Support Portal. 
involving Pierre Omidyar. And here it is. I had to do this on Facebook. And I said, why has Elon Musk not put Dr. Shiva back on Twitter? Dr. Shiva was the first in September 2020 in historic federal lawsuit to expose the existence of the actual infrastructure created by Twitter to allow government to silence speech of every American. The infrastructure still exists. Elon, you have will have your committee review all the evidence accepted and presented in federal court. Dr. Shiva must be one of the first to be put back on Twitter. I said, you know, well, God damn it, you know, A, put me back on Twitter and get rid of this backdoor portal. So what then happens is on October 31st, 2022, Omidyar, by the way, I say Omidyar's Intercept because the Intercept was founded and funded by Pierre Omidyar, who's the chairman of eBay and the founder who actually bought PayPal from Elon Musk and Peter Thiel. So Elon Musk's money comes right from Pierre Omidyar, who is the one who created the censorship infrastructure. But Omidyar is the one who funded that entire censorship network, particularly the ability for government to route their messages and um, do an end run around the First Amendment. So that was on uh, October 31st, uh, The Intercept, dropped a story which was called dhs leaks which was plagiarized for my entire lawsuit but the problem was they didn't share the entire network diagram they only shared a little piece of it so two and a half years later the intercept knowing that i was going to not let this go shares a little piece of that story and as it says the intercept dhs leaks is nothing new but a blatant plagiarism of my work that has been on this website for over two years and the aim of this effort was to intentionally conceal that Pierre Omidyar, the founder and the funder of The Intercept, is the same person who funded the government big tech censorship infrastructure, as we brought out in our lawsuit. So think about what I'm saying here. I had exposed all of this, the entire extent of that infrastructure. Two years later, when I posted on Facebook to Musk that, hey, are you going to take down that backdoor portal? Boom, the next day, The Intercept drops their story. There you see Omidyar who's the one who owns The Intercept and funded it, his same organization releases a story saying, oh my God, we have found the censorship infrastructure. Problem is they leave out the fact Omidyar is the one who funded it. And as I looked at this, I'm wondering like, what the hell's going on? This turns out, this is called a limited hangout. What is a limited hangout? It is a way to deceive people when they know a big version of that story is going to come out, which they knew I was going to bring it out again. So it's a CIA technique, as I've talked about, where the government working with media companies will release a small version of the story, which is the intercept is basically works for the government guys. So they released a small version of the entire story. It's called the limited hangout. You hang out a story in a limited way, hoping that everyone would forget about it. This was a cover up. And you can go read about it in intelligence circles. It's known as an intelligence technique to cover up the big story. And I uh, wrote about this, what is a limited hangout? Okay, it's pretty dangerous. And Tucker Carlson and Glenn Greenwald and the ACLU were all part of this. These people are all part of the government deep state uh, intelligence network because they needed to hide my story because I'm not neither left or right. I'm an independent fighter, an independent journalist and uh, the leader of an independent movement for truth, freedom, and health. Hold it right there, John, stop. They didn't want others to know about this. So they concealed my story for two years. And when they knew I was gonna bring it out again, they put a limited version out of it. Tucker Carlson, Glenn Greenwald amplified it, who were the two people that concealed it two years before. And then they attempted to plagiarize it. And then when things got really tough, then they, Three years later, then they start talking about it, AKA Twitter files. I told the whole truth about the entire censorship network. They then concealed it in 2020. Then what, then they later plagiarized it, which is what the Intercept did and Twitter files. Then they misattributed it, never even cited my work, which is one of the grossest unethical violations in journalism. Then they lied and they tried to manipulate the full story. Then they hijacked it, gave a little bit of it, and then they amplified it. And that's what Fucker Carlson, as well as Glenn Greenwald and others did. So they concealed, plagiarized, misattributed, prevaricated, hijacked, and then they amplified the half-truth. They deplatformed people like me, 
calling me conspiracy theorists, and they let scumbags like Tucker Carlson and others remain. They never got thrown off. Tucker Carlson was never deplatformed. I was. Now, The Intercept in intentionally buried my story to conceal their own funders' involvement in creating that in in infrastructure. Tucker Carlson knowing this, and by the way, Fox News, his boss, was also involved in creating this infrastructure. Again, all of this I exposed long before the plagiarists known as Twitter files and all the grifters who supported Twitter files. This wasn't just incompetence. This was intentional. They concealed my lawsuit. Tucker Carlson concealed it. Elon Musk concealed it. They were playing a game. Now, Pierre Omidyar is actually an asset of the government. Again, he created The Intercept and he's involved in many, many imperialist censorship activities, as you can see in this diagram. Okay, there he is. He's the one who created the Center for, or, or supported and funded the Center for Internet Security to launder the censorship from government to Twitter, Elon Musk's Twitter, okay? And there you go. You can do an analysis. You can click on that. You can find out all the ways that Pierre Omidyar is involved in all sorts of deep state shenanigans. After ACLU, ACLU didn't cover our lawsuit and we exposed all that, although they covered the intercepts thing two years later. And by the way, Pierre Omidyar funds the ACLU about a million bucks a year. You say again, this is all a limited hangout. They didn't want to get our story out. When it mattered, they waited for two years. Fucker Carlson can't say he didn't know. And by the way, two years later, when two, two years later, when the intercept story comes out, Tucker Carlson acts as though he had never heard about this backdoor portal. How do I know that? Let's look at his transcript. He put this little dweeb called Lee Fang on, who is the guy who plagiarized my lawsuit. And look at what Tucker Carlson says. He goes, this seems to be a really important story, which is for some reason being ignored. Okay, yeah, you ignored the story, Tucker. What are you talking about? This is why I use curse words to call these people, and sh so should you. His name is Fucker Carlson because he fucked us. He fucked you, he fucked everyone in the United States because he could have covered this in 2020. All of this is here in black and white. Uh, I also, as a part of this, recognize that Elon Musk was a government frontman. I put this out in November 2022, and this started going viral, and I still wasn't on Twitter. Suddenly, I get put back on Twitter on December 20th of 2020. John, keep it there. John, don't scroll up. John, keep it where it was. Keep it where it was, please. Keep it right there. Yeah. So I want you guys to all read this because I did this in November of 2022. Now I'm exposing, I've exposed Tucker, I've exposed the censorship infrastructure, and I realize that Elon Musk ain't going to do anything, that he's a complete false god. When I put this up and I started hammering Musk, Every moron, cat fucking turd, piece of shit turd, Dan Bogino, another doofus, Jack fucking Posobic, another grifter, um, and go down the list. All of these so-called conservatives, Dinesh Bubuza, okay, Bozo, all these people were praising and sucking Musk off as though he was their god. And here, I was a lone voice exposing the facts in bare view. And this was a central piece of this. And when you read this article, it exposes in detail Elon Musk owns SpaceX. I talked about Elon Musk being a part of the climate change scam, making money off Tesla. Bottom line is Elon Musk and government are one. And government represents World Economic Forum. It represents big tech. It represents all those people. And when I put this out there, all of these people poo-pooed me, attacked me viciously. No different than the way that the liberals attacked me when I exposed the pandemic bullshit and, and, and ran the fire Fauci campaign in 2020. Again, when doofus Bobby Kennedy wasn't there. You have Tucker Carlson, you have uh, characters like RFK Jr., Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson. Chris, when you say the top of the list, just be clear, these people are all supporting, tweeting how much they loved Elon Musk, what a great guy he was. Well, I was in there in the trenches exposing him. Just let's make that point clear. Yeah, I mean, here they are on on their public platforms where they are, are not shadow banned, reaching their huge audiences, saying, oh, this is such a great thing for free speech. And, that, and now you can already see the tides turning. 
people like uh, Tim Pool uh, posting about the the decision to make a, a World Economic Chair the CEO of Twitter. Uh, all of these people, in the end, they they grift on 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 the story up front, and then in the end, they they turn on their audience and say, "Oh, who could have seen it coming?" But Dr. Shiva and the Truth Freedom Health Movement ha has seen it coming since day one. Well, well, Chris, one of the important points is Tim Pool never covered us when we were calling this out. And another fuckface by the name of Patrick Bet David, who I just want to remind you, this guy is a pay to play motherfucker. OK. Two, three years ago, I suddenly remembered who this guy was when the pandemic was going on. I was the first one to call lockdowns. I was going viral everywhere. And this fool wanted me to come down and be on a show. He promised to get us a certain type of airfare for our tickets, which we needed. We get to the airport. He hadn't gotten that airfare. He's a scumbag. Bait and switch motherfucker. So me and my uh, assistant Richard left. And then he thought that I wanted to be so much on a show like other grifters that I do anything. I didn't. Recently, if I remember right, Chris, he was doing another show and you had to pay him close to a thousand bucks to even mention my name in a YouTube super chat. And then he mentions my name and he has the gall, this scumbag. And I think he's an intelligence asset. Patrick Bet David had the audacity to say that, oh, I'm a smart guy, but I'm arrogant and I should behave more like a Brahmin, you know, Vivek, who is a fucking idiot, top down, spoon fed motherfucker that he wants me not to be me, but I should talk diplomatically like this Yale graduate called Vivek. You see, that's the epitome of racism. Because what it says is that I'm not being a good Indian. Why don't you talk like this good Indian? I'm not gonna talk like a good Indian. I'm a brilliant guy who grew up in the streets of Bombay, as Richard said, and the streets of New Jersey. I will call you a fucker to your face, Patrick Bet David. And that's what you guys are. Tim Pool, Patrick Bet David, Joe Rogan, all of you guys who will probably do whatever Elon Musk tells you did not cover me and still won't because you know why? Maybe it's because I'm brown skinned. Maybe it's because I'm not in your left or right little clubs. Chris, I think you should read out all those people's names who are sucking off Elon Musk. Read them out loud and enunciate their names, Chris. Yeah. Uh, where were you, Tucker Carlson, when Dr. Shiva uh, broke the news about the Twitter partnership, uh, partner support portal, RFK, Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, where were you when we are breaking the news and letting everybody know that this portal exists and we can keep going? Dan Bongino, Charlie Kirk, Glenn Beck, Jack, P Jack Pisovic, a, a, a CIA asset. Like, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, Tim Cass, who, who has people like Jack, and these, these people all have, they're all guests on each other's shows. They're all in the same club. These are not so obvious establishment characters meant to bring us back to the establishment. It, it's these, these people are the new media. They are distracting you from actually uh, getting uh, together with your community and building a movement and, and stop looking for gods on high to come save you. These people aren't here to save you. They're here to distract you from doing something about the problems that we face in this, in this country in the world abroad. We called all this out two years ago and all of these people who are government front men, and that's what they are, hit our news intentionally for two reasons. One, they don't want to give, amplify our independent movement. And two, they're part of the government infrastructure. My views have gone down from 500,000 views per day down to 5,000 views per day. That's shadow banning and Musk knows what he's doing. And he's a scumbag. You know, when you first called out Elon Musk, um, the vitriol, it was just unbelievable. And then, I mean, we got it secondhand too um, in the comments and when, you know, giving people the truth in the comment sections, especially on Twitter, they would just, you know, deflect it off to us as well. If somebody is not saying the right thing at the right time and they wait until later after the damage is done, until it's popular or convenient, at, at best, they're just stupid or ignorant, and at worst, they're part of the problem. They're part of the establishment or the not-so-obvious establishment. 
The life expectancy in the United States is going down. If you have kids, your kids are going to live less than you. Think about what I'm saying. And this is brought to you not by the Republicans or not by the Democrats, but by both of their policies for the last 60 to 80 years, starting with the Kennedys, then going to the Reagans and then the Carters, the Reagans, the Trumps, the Bidens, all of them. They don't give a damn about you. I care. And our movement cares about working people. You know why? Because we're one of you. Robert Kennedy ain't one of you guys. Wake up. Wake up. Booby ain't one of you. He's a billion dollar trust fund kid. He can spit in policeman's face, which he did. And nothing happens to him. Ted Kennedy can murder people. Nothing happens to him. Okay. John F. Kennedy read Seymour Hersh's uh, book was a complete dick. Reckless fool. He almost he's the one who started the Vietnam War. But they create this huge mythos around the Kennedys. The Kennedys are mafia scumbags. Let go of the brainwashing. I'm sorry, Donald Trump, who has got his gold plate of toilet seat, is a dick. I don't think they understand the definition of humility. Humility is not just being humble, like Dr. Shiva, sometimes you talk about being a good little in Indian or whatever. Being humble also means embracing what you, your success and your strengths and, and standing up for those things like you do for the invention of email. So when I hear that kind of crap, it's such a cop out. And I think people need to start seeing through that as well. Yeah, and being humble way, doesn't mean you don't let other people falsely claim to do what you, the work that you did. Like that's, that's just dishonest. We all have a backbone. So you just need to use it and recognize that you don't want to outsource your power. Your power is within you and you don't need someone telling you, dictating to you how to live, how to uh, take care of yourself. And we will expose the left from the left and we'll expose the right from the right. Jack Posobiec should just go back to his mama's basement. Dan Bugino should just go run away somewhere because all he wants to do is make money. Talk, uh, you know, and I can't believe Melania still stays with Trump, okay? Like these people are fucking crazy. The guy goes and pays off whores and this, and the conservatives still—he's he, still the conservatives' leader. John, can you believe this? I—I I mean, unbelievable the contradictions here. Unbelievable. You're a Christian and you support Donald Trump. Are you freaking serious? Okay. How many times you're going to do that? You're all abuse victims if you support these people. Service is citizenship, and we're here for you. Thank you.